We do. So they were around here very sneakily, calling, making lots and lots of noise last night. As we were chatting about earlier, it's the Nkuhum Pride. It looks, uh, I'm trying to figure out which one of the adults because they're lying in this long grass and it's proving quite difficult to count if all of them are here. I can see at least one, two, at least four adults. I I'm sure all five of them are here. And then there's a big Birmingham too who I can't see. Craig, do you think we can have a look at the Birmingham's face? I just want to see if I can see any identifying features there. Yes, no, I don't I don't know who this is. Maybe in four more? But it's hard to say. But you can let us know. You're also good at IDing these big cats. And hashtag Safari Live. Now we are just if you didn't hear me talking about it earlier, we're, we're near Inga's. Um, sorry, Chantal's just asking me where the lions are. So we're near Inga's. That's the house that the other people that work with us live in. But we're sitting here, and this is a real carpet of lions. I think it is informal. Yes, I can see that cut on his eye now that he opened it. See that, just at, at the edge? I think it is. Wait, if he stands up, that'll be great. Now, he's got a very full belly. Very, very round. So he's had something to eat. Uh, everybody else doesn't really look like they've had much at all. They've got slight little bellies. But that's it. Oh, that male lion has just sat up. Just watching. Yeah, definitely informal. You can see quite easily now. He's the most battered of all the boys, and he's got that big cut on his right eye, just under his eye. He always seems to have altercations. But a beautiful lion, nonetheless. Shame, Craig, I haven't really done you much justice. I wonder if I reverse a little bit. If I do this, you can get a, a clearer shot of his face. Let me do that. Let me just reposition slightly so we can have a look at him with... How's that? That better? There we go. Now you can all take some nice screenshots. There we go. And you don't have any branches in your way. It is, of course, very difficult to try and get a clear view, especially when the lions are laying flat in the grass, which they do oh so well. But take full advantage of this beautiful fella as he sits up, because I don't think he's going to stay in this upright position for very long. He looks exhausted. I don't know what he's caught. Um, I don't know, maybe they took down a wildebeest last night. That would explain why the wildebeest have run so far away and are in Impala Plains now. But look at those eyes growing very heavy. I reckon his nose is going to touch the ground very shortly and he'll roll back onto his back with his belly up towards the sky. This is nice. I'm glad the lions are back, which would mean that they will be back for this afternoon as well. I don't think that they'll get moving. The only thing they might do, though, is the spot that they're in is not a particularly good spot to, sh to sort of shade themselves. It's very exposed. It's very open. And they might move. If I were them, I think they'll probably go a little bit further east or north. And there's some nice marula trees. This block is actually quite a, quite a lovely block. And there's lots of quarry trees that they can sort of lay underneath and be protected from the sun because it is going to be a warm day today. And I just wonder when they settled down. So we didn't come this side this morning, actually. We were we drove all the way along Zoe's Road and we checked the boundaries. I didn't actually see where those lines have crossed in. I don't know where the Nkuhumas have been for the last few days either. They've been MIA moving all over the show, constantly searching for buffalo. Now, if they'd taken down a buffalo, we would still see some remnants of it, so I don't think that that's what they caught. I think it must have been something quite small. There's one of the adults, one of the lionesses. Still trying to see one, two, three. There's, you know, the juveniles now, the sub-adults, have got so big that when they lay down in the grass like this, it's almost impossible to tell the difference between the adults and the youngsters, barring that they still have a, a slightly fluffy coat. It almost looks like they haven't been paying attention to grooming which I think is the least of their worries at this age. But how peaceful is this? Isn't this awesome? Lots of sleepy cats. Now remember, this is live. This is happening right now. And we'd love to hear from you. So you can hashtag Safari Live with any of your questions. Isn't this cool? You know, 
Nen is my favorite Birmingham, but because I don't see him very often, um, Fumo is actually starting to grow on me now. He's a very, very nice lion to photograph with all those cuts on his faces. Now he's just looking around. I think he's giving everybody the evil eye. That we're all sitting in the sighting watching him just going, oh, I thought I'd given you all the slip. Almost. But not quite just yet. Oh. Now, Jono, to some you're wondering if I know how old this fella is. Uh, yeah, we do. We have a rough sort of estimate as to the ages of uh, the Birminghams. When uh, they first arrived, they were about five years old. Uh, they must be almost six and a half, so yeah, about six and a half, six and a half. We, we undecided because there's four Birminghams. There used to be five, but sadly one of them was taken out by a buffalo. See, the tables do turn occasionally. Now, Nsuku and Nena have much darker manes, more fuller manes, and they've had their big manes for quite some time. Um, so we think that they are a little bit older than Tinyo and Mfumo. I think Mfumo might actually be the youngest male in the pride because his mane is only just starting to turn that sort of darker color now and typically if if it is a dark mane lion not all lions have dark manes like this that normally starts to develop at about six years old so i reckon that the birmingham boys and, and of course this is just my opinion nobody knows for sure their exact date of birth so it's sort of a, a rough estimate but i reckon that they're between about six and six and a half years old now somewhere around there give or take a little bit Maybe even Nsuku and Nena could be closer to seven years old. But they all would have left their pride, their maternal pride, all around the same time. So it doesn't matter even if there's a year, sometimes even two years age gap, you'll find that the, the male lines will stick together and all try and leave at the same time. They've got a better chance of survival by doing it that way too, rather than one going off on his own, and then a couple of months later, another one going off on his own. Oh, are we going to do a big yawn for us? Yes, good boy. Oh, not really a big yawn, just a little one. And that's not him going to wake up. I think that's him doing a yawn going, right, I'm ready to go to bed now again. There we go. These canines are still in good condition too. Tinyo has not got the greatest canines, that's what his name means, tooth. Yeah, come on, give us one. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Especially that his mane is backlit. What a stunning lion. <laughs> hmm. Now, satin digit, I think that's how we say it. You're wondering if this pride has got any nearby competition. Most certainly. There's actually quite a few lion prides within the area. So I think, if anything, the biggest competition for the Ngulham Pride in terms of size has to be from the Torchwood Pride. Now, they don't normally step foot onto Juma, but occasionally we see their tracks crossing in on the eastern corner of the property, but then they don't come into the property for very long, and then they disappear again. I have yet to see the Torchwood Pride. So that's their biggest competition. There's quite a few females, lots of cubs, but the Birmingham boys also uh, go through and sort of ma maintain a relationship with them. Then we've got the sticks pride, but that's only three lionesses. So three lionesses versus five lionesses, plus all these sub-adult cubs, not really too much competition. So the sticks will try and keep away from, from the Nkuhumas, and the Nkuhumas will try and taste them out. Then there's the Tsalalas too. Again, it's a sort of small little breakaway pride. There's only, uh, last time I was there, was only two females. Uh, so, so not very many at all. So not huge competition, but that, that doesn't mean to say that tomorrow a new pride could move into the area. Uh, things like this can happen all the time. Oh, you didn't like that. I think he removed a tick from his paw and then got it stuck in his teeth. So at the moment, the Ngohuma pride seemed to be the greatest around here. <laughs> Faisal, you say that Mfumo is the Scarface of the Sabi Sand. I suppose. I don't think he's quite as well known as the Scarface in the Maasai Mara National Park. He's definitely one of the most famous lions out there. Hey, good boy. Now look how big he is, especially with that big belly. Now don't hide and scratch like that. Let me go back a little bit more for you, Craig. Just try and 
keep angling it so we can see him nicely. There we go. That's a bit better. Now, Joe, you're wondering what does Mfumo mean? Mfumo means the authority. And I suppose it's very fitting because if anybody gets a hiding, Mfumo is usually the one that gives it. He boxes with his brothers all the time. Him and Tinyo used to have the most dramatic fights over females, which is also quite common. So there's not just one dominant male within a coalition. They are constantly competing with one another. So one day you might have had a better meal and you're feeling fitter and stronger than your brother. And that doesn't mean that they're blood related to. They could just come from the same pride. And, and then they'll have a box, they'll have a fight. And whoever wins that argument, it doesn't normally end in death. It's, a, it's just a scrap amongst siblings. Like, you know how you uh, at home, my brother and I, when we were younger, we often used to get into fights, which is normal. Now we're the best of friends. And, and that's the same thing. And one week, Sean would win a fight, and the next week I would, you know, come out being the winner. And it chops and changes like that. But normally they're quite placid. You know, that just causes a bit of a stir when uh, the females come into estrus. Then you can imagine they all want to mate with them. But normally it ends up being that all the males in the pride end up mating with the same female. So you never really know as to which offspring, uh, or sorry, who's fathered the offspring. He's very itchy. Just behind his leg there, he's enjoying that scratch. You can see he's licking his lips. That's always so funny to see. We see it with our cats and our dogs doing it. But it's, it's quite amusing to see a fully grown male lion do that. Yes, you need to clean your face up. I think you need the ladies to help you. But they can groom their faces. What they will do is they'll lick their paws and then sort of stroke over their, their faces with their wet paws and that will help groom the hair. But we'll stay with these lines and see what they get up to. Byron's sitting at a dam, and I reckon he's wanting to do some birding.